Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the arterial anastomosis on the back of the thigh. Actually, what are the different arteries that are going to supply the back of the thigh? So basically, we'll begin with the abdominal aorta. So what happens? We have the abdominal aorta, right? As the abdominal aorta passes down, it will divide into the right and the left common iliac arteries. The right common, uh, right and the left common iliac arteries will further subdivide into the external iliac artery as well as the internal iliac artery. Now, as this external iliac artery passes down the inguinal ligament, it continues as the femoral artery. Now, as the femoral artery will continue down and as it reaches the uh, knee, it will continue as the popliteal artery. So, I think you are getting where I am arriving, arriving at. So, what do we have? We have the abdominal aorta dividing into the right and the left common iliac arteries. The right and the left common iliac artery will further subdivide into the external iliac artery as well as the internal iliac artery. The external iliac artery will continue as the femoral artery after passing through the inguinal ligament and this femoral artery will continue as the popliteal artery when it goes around the knee. Now what do we have? From the, from the femoral artery we have a largest branch which is known as the profunda femoris artery. From this profunda femoris artery, we have a lateral circumflex uh, iliac artery as well as the medial circumflex iliac artery. Now, as it goes down, it will give four branches of the perforating arteries. One, two, three and this is the fourth perforating artery. Now, from the popliteal artery, we have one more branch which is known as the superior muscular branch. We have the superior muscular branch of the popliteal artery which will anastomose with the fourth perforating artery. So what do we have? We have the profunda femoris artery from the femoral artery. It is going to give the lateral circumflex femoral artery, the medial circumflex femoral artery and four perforating arteries which are the one, one, two, three and the fourth. The fourth one will anastomose with the superior muscular branch of the popliteal artery. So this is about the basics that you, that you need to know about the arterial anastomosis on the back of the thigh. So basically what we have, we have three types of anastomosis. Number one is called as the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. Longitudinal arterial anastomosis and the second arterial anastomosis this is called as the trochanteric anastomosis. Trochanteric anastomosis and the third arterial anastomosis is called as the cruciate anastomosis. Cruciate anastomosis. So basically what happens? We have three important arterial anastomosis, right? That is called as the longitudinal arterial anastomosis, the trochanteric anastomosis, as well as the cruciate anastomosis. Okay, now we are going to look into detail of each one of them. So what happens when it comes to the longitudinal arterial anastomosis? This is the main arterial supply on the back of the thigh. Main arterial supply on the back of the thigh is the longitudinal arterial anastomosis. Now what happens? We have the, uh, what is it? this is called as the abdominal aorta, right? abdominal aorta then we have the common iliac arteries the right and the left then it is divided into the external iliac artery as well as the internal iliac artery then it continues down as the femoral artery and this will continue down as the popliteal artery now this is going to give the lateral circumflex femoral artery this is the lateral circumflex femoral artery this is the medial circumflex femoral artery and then these are the four perforating arteries perforating arteries and this is the superior muscular branch of the popliteal artery superior muscular branch of the popliteal artery so this is about the arterial anastomosis that you need to know so when it comes to the this the longitudinal arterial anastomosis this is formed by the four perforating arteries of the profunda femoris artery so that is about the longitudinal arterial anastomosis now when it comes to the trochanteric anastomosis Trochanteric anastomosis is found by the ascending branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery, medial circumflex femoral artery and the lateral circumflex femoral artery, ascending branches of this and then the descending branches of the inferior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery as well as superior gluteal artery. So the trochanteric anastomosis is found by the medial circumflex femoral artery, lateral circumflex femoral artery, inferior gluteal artery as well as the superior gluteal artery. This is of the descending branches, descending branches and this is of the ascending branches, ascending branches. So ascending branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery as well as the lateral circumflex femoral artery 
and the descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery as well as the superior gluteal artery these all will take part in the formation of the trochanteric anastomosis now when it, when it comes to the cruciate anastomosis for the cruciate anastomosis what do we have we have the transverse branch the transverse branch of the same medial circumflex femoral artery as well as the lateral circumflex femoral artery and then we have the ascending branch of the first perforating artery and descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery we have the ascending branch of the first perforating artery as well as we have a descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery inferior gluteal artery so i am repeating it again for the formation of the cruciate anastomosis we have transverse branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery lateral circumflex femoral artery and then we have ascending branches of the first perforating and artery and the descending branches of the inferior gluteal artery so from the in, in from the internal iliac artery we have the superior gluteal artery as well as the inferior gluteal artery right these will and the lateral circumflex femoral artery and medial circumflex femoral artery these all will take part in the formation of the trochanteric anastomosis so this trochanteric anastomosis is situated in the trochanteric fossa trochanteric fossa and then we have one more that is the cruciate anastomosis this cruciate anastomosis is situated on the back of the femur at the level of the lesser trochanter and that is found by the again a small branch from the lateral circumflex femoral artery middle circumflex femoral artery as well as the first perforating artery and also the descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery descending branch of the inferior gluteal artery and those all four arteries will form the cruciate anastomosis so this is the cruciate anastomosis which is situated on the at the back of the femur at the level of the lesser trochanter so this is about the anatomy of the arterial anastomosis on the back of the thigh formed by the longitudinal arterial anastomosis trochanteric anastomosis as well as the cruciate anastomosis we have also discussed different branches of the arteries taking part in these anastomosis and main important arterial supply taking part of the back of the thigh so thank you guys this will be the video of it and if you like my video make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and you can always share it to other friends and people who want to learn more about the anatomy thank you so much